our next honoree is a wonderful man who moved to St. George six years ago with big dreams and high hopes. Chris McArdle showed the Southern Utah LGBT community that anything is possible, even in one of the most conservative counties in the country. His passion, leadership, and tireless effort resulted in three successful and newsworthy gay pride festivals. I just saw the possibility that they didn't know they had. And I knew that, that with a little bit of encouragement and a little bit of stimulation, and I didn't know how much work, <laughs> But I knew that, that, I don't know, I just always saw a big event. I never saw a little, we never went little. We went big. Yeah, first met Chris at uh, the Southern Utah Pride. Uh, as you can tell, the, we understood that he was the gentleman that was, had put the show together and he was obviously uh, very busy. Fortunate for us, we were able to connect with him afterwards and realize how big a heart this guy had. He recognized the need in St. George for uh, a community. We had a small community here, a small community there. Nothing was really organized and it was really kind of at the advent of the internet and social networking and everything. So it was really, the timing was prime. And sometimes I think leadership chooses you. You don't choose leadership. He had no idea. Uh, really what he was getting into when he moved here. He was kind of illusioned by the beauty and, uh, and uh, saw a need in the community for a leader. Chris, he was president of the board. He became the spokesperson for the board. And he was out there and he did all the interviews and everything and, and he was a very good spokesman. Chris came out and he was a leader. He came out and was not afraid. He had courage. And as people begin to see gays, not as gays, but as people, then the progress continues. But it takes that initial courage. And as others have said, his personal interaction with other members in the gay community who were struggling had made ter terrific impact on their lives. I might not see all of the changes, but I won't ever stop believing in them. I won't ever stop believing that one day every gay child will have every opportunity to be their authentic self and to go on through their lives and, and just be happy and embrace life for who they are, you know? I might not see it, but I believe it's gonna happen. It's been a tremendous help. He set up link meetings so that all of the community mem members could meet together and talk about the events that were going on and their personal things like Planned Parenthood and all of the different branches of our community. And he really brings everyone together in that way just trying to reach out to everyone. He saw the opportunity, he saw a need, and he stepped in and said, you know, I have a voice and I'm gonna use it. And I really think by Chris finding his voice, it helped give our community here in Southern Utah a voice. So he comes across personally, he's a bundle of just energy. He's just energy. When he walks into an area, you know Chris McArdle is there. And he's just sort of a natural leader. And I don't think enough can be said about what he's done for the gay community. Chris never has excuses for anything and he never accepts excuses. So congratulations, Chris. And knowing Chris has been uh, very special. He's an inspiration to, uh, I think, all of us in uh, his ability to communicate and to um, actually be a, a focus in the community. He's not afraid to be out. It was just really to save the life of one kid. And that's what kept us focused. That's what, when the obstacles would come, when the drama would come, when the rejection would come, when the denial or the inability of the community to support us was there, we never changed the focus from saving the life of one kid. That's what I said over and over and over. It's not about us, it's not about you know, whether we look good or look bad, it's to save a kid. And if we say, and, and another thing that we focused on was is that we don't know what kid's life we're saving and what that kid can go on and do.
kind of what this means to me. Um, first of all, I, I, I want to get back to just thanking people. There's so many people that have feels when you do the right thing. And a lot of times, uh, it just is there. Um, the whole thing kind of reminds me, and, and Claudia's talk kind of reminds me of a story about this guy that was taking a jog through the Grand Canyon National Park. And um, he wasn't paying much attention to what he was doing. He tripped, he fell, and he was hanging off the ledge. And he was screaming, help, help, help. But he was way out in the middle of nowhere. There was nobody around. And all of a sudden, this voice from the, the heavens came to him and it said, let go, my son. I was like, what? what? Let go, my son. Guy held on for a second and he's like, anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the, <laughs> the reason that reminds me of it is, is that when you have that like inner knowing, and, and I don't know if many of you know it, but the word sin and it's an, it comes from an archery term, and it means to miss the mark. So when we're out there, and we're in our day-to-day -day lives, and an opportunity comes when somebody's being discriminated against, we've basically, by not speaking up, have committed a sin because we've missed our mark. And it's always there for us. It's always there clearly in our hearts when we know we're, we should be doing the right things. So, um, the GSA kids, I mean, this was kind of part of the vision for, for Pride, and, and the coolest thing about this is, is that these kids are now empowered, and they're not just empowered, but they're empowering other kids. And now... They've got all of us now, when they need someone to fall back on, and we don't want to commit, commit a sin and miss this mark ever again. So, pay attention to your heart, folks. Um, on that note, I'm going to close, and it's a Khalil Gibran quote, and it's called On Children, and if I can read it with my eyeballs, it will be a nice thing. <clears throat> but it goes like this. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And, they are, and though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you, for life goes not backwards nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite, and he bends you with his might that his arrow may go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness, for even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves also the bow that is stable. So be stable and don't sin and don't miss your marks. Thank you.